A lot has happened in the last four years in Seattle. The removal of the viaduct, the West Seattle Bridge shutdown, protests around police reform, and of course, the lives lost and economic fallout from a pandemic. Mayor Jenny Durkin will step down in just two weeks with Mayor-elect Bruce Harrell waiting in the wings. And that's right. So what does she think went right? What went wrong? What did she learn? What's her legacy? Camera 7's Patrick Quinn sat down one-on-one -on -one with Mayor Durkin today. And Patrick, there was a lot to cover. There certainly was a lot to cover for a lot has happened in the last four years and really the last two years. Durkin mentioned and recognized it has been a challenge to lead Seattle through these through these last two years and there's been a lot of criticism her way as well. Now it's worth mentioning I've interviewed her roughly maybe a hundred times in the last four years but this is just the second time I ever saw her get visibly emotional. Her responsibility as mayor has certainly weighed on her. Jenny Durkin, the 56th mayor of Seattle. In her final weeks in office, she told me her legacy is the city's response to the pandemic, including standing up testing and vaccination sites. And today, even though we were the first ones in, city of Seattle has the lowest incidence of disease, hospitalizations and mortality rate of any city in the country. But will Durkin be remembered for her action during the pandemic or will her summer of love response to the protests of 2020 forever haunt her? Durkin said in addressing police reform, it was a lack of unity with city leaders that really hindered her. And remember, I had seven city council members who said we're going to cut the police by 50 percent. And the conflict between us really came from me saying no. But do you wish you had shown more strength? I don't know how you show more strength when you are have so many forces aligned on different sides. You had such volatility coming from the president, coming from other spots. Many people thought I should be more forceful against the police. Others thought I should be more forceful against the protesters. And my job as mayor was, how do we de-escalate and calm this down? Durkin knows she lost the trust of some in the city during that time, only made worse from an inability to produce text messages from this consequential period. The city attorney's office told me they're still waiting on a forensics report on why thousands of text messages from eight city leaders were automatically deleted between August 2019 to June 2020. Durkin said she never did anything to destroy them and has nothing to hide. I was in front of the cameras sometimes two, three times a day. Chief Best was there. We were very public about what we were doing and why we were doing it. So what's next? Durkin said she doesn't know what she'll do, only that she first will take some time off. She says she's exhausted from the toll of the last two years. A harder sense of realism. Explain that. I got to stop. Could you stop rolling, please? We stopped recording to allow her to collect her thoughts. She said the violent threats to her and her family are tough to talk about. Like the time protesters marched to her home in June 2020. We were there as protesters made their way deeper into the neighborhood. Stopping in front of a home, they say, is Mayor Durkin's. She's felt her safety compromised. And looking ahead, Durkin worries about the safety of her city. The whole year I was trying to get the ability to recruit more officers and keep the ones we have. And that's going to be a real challenge for the incoming mayor. And that incoming mayor is mayor-elect Bruce Harrell. He will start, his term will start on January 4th. There will actually be a swear-in ceremony here at City Hall on January 4th. Live in Seattle tonight, Patrick Quinn, Cairo 7 News. Interesting interview. Thank you.